again, each of these putts are big putts, obviously, but maybe psychologically more for Tom at this point. Just a moment ago, it seems he had a three-stroke lead, and now he's got this putt to just keep a share of it. Cross-handed putting stroke. Boy, Bob, he sure seems jumpy. I tell you, he got over that putt and then backed away again. He's having problems keeping his concentration all of a sudden. Yes. All right. Eighteenth U.S. Open and first time he's ever been a real factor. Ozaki, just off the ninth fairway. That was nope. an eight iron shot from the right rough, and I cannot tell you how long he drove the ball here because players cannot afford to hit the ball in the right rough, and he just did it past the corner. That's where he got his nickname, Jumbo. Hitting the ball so far. Larry Nelson at the eighth. It's for birdie. Scott Simpson got his par at the seventh also, so Kite and he remain tied. Nelson now one under with that par. Well, last year, as you know, in their first 21 games, the Baltimore Orioles lost all of them and finished in the cellar. This year, they're flying high in a race for the top of the American League. The Baltimore Orioles meet the California Angels, or the Toronto Blue Jays face the defending American League champions, the Oakland Athletics. East meets West on ABC's Thursday Night Baseball. Curtis Strange. And speaking of Orioles, he's an Oriole fan. This is our own Jim McKay. He's a little more chipper this year about his Orioles. This putt from about 15 feet. Left to right swinger. Slightly downhill. To get a share of the lead. No, Curtis. He's had a lot of downhill putts today, David, and he's overdue. Tom Kide and Scott Simpson, co-leaders, just one shot ahead of Curtis Strange. If you were a friend of Rochester businessman Joseph Wilson in the late 1940s and took his advice to invest $1,000 in his company, then called Haloid, the value of your stock today would be about $950,000. That little company, born in Rochester, is known today as Xerox. And the golf course all around. It's the Goodyear blimp. America, sailing today in clear blue skies. Out of Houston, Texas. A long way from home. Another Texan, Tom Kite. All right, Tom! <laughs> well, that's it, part of the course it's down as we look at the ninth hole. Number nine, the finishing hole on the front nine. Beautiful par four that you're playing. Slight dog leg to the right, as you see. Again, very important to put the ball in the fairway, and you're shooting uphill to this green. Small bunker left short, and, of course, a larger bunker there to the right. Pinned today in the back of the green. Larry Nelson. Two shots off the lead. A 
That's a nice looking tee shot down the right side of the fairway. Okay. Now Scott Simpson at the eighth. He's just going to lay out. He has no chance of getting anywhere near the green. Boy, his drivers left him, it seems, at the time, huh? Yeah, hey. <coughs> one to the left and then one to the right. Well, second to the left, uh, Bob. He, he Second hole, wasn't he, to the left? Yes, that's right. So he's, so he's hit two hooks, and that's what happens to you. you if you lose your rhythm, you're going to hit uh, a couple of strangers here. That's going to have to stop. Uh, no, it didn't. Ooh, don't get it. Sort of went down deep, too. Yeah. Got into the second cut of that rough there, Bob, it looked like. Tom Kite's 195 yards into the breeze. I would think a three iron would be the right shot for Tom here. Pin right in the middle of the green. While we wait there, Mark McCumber in the 10th. A moment ago. Now we're back for Tom Kite. Ball's going a little left. It takes a terrible kick. Oh, I think it went through the bunker, Rossi. Oh, well, I, I'm not too sure about goes that. Way back. That has a lip on it there, uh, Jack, and I'm not too sure that he did. Nelson? That's a four iron from 191. Had to fade the ball to get it around the overhanging trees. Slows down. He's got a good shot, but it didn't. All right, Simpson a little trouble. Kite may be in a little trouble at the eighth hole. Tom may be in a lot of trouble there because if that did stay in the bunker, it looked as though it might have gone up against the lip in the back of the down slope and no green. Curtis Strange. Curtis has driven the ball in casual water, but his relief is going to be into the rough on the right-hand side, and the trees would block him out. The wind is coming out of the right, mostly right at us. You don't have to go all the way back. No, you don't. It's, a, you know, the green narrows further you get back there. Yeah. As you heard him say, he has 172. His whole playing uphill into the wind, he's going to play a five iron. Well, the good point about the rule is, uh, you know, we saw Tom Kite at the first hole get to go back to the fairway. Now, the rule here would have worked the other way. Certainly doesn't want to take it out of the fairway and drop it into the rough. Well, you can always play it. up the hill, sure. Curtis just noticing the wind's coming up a little bit stronger. He's thinking a four iron now, he said. He has a five iron in his hand. All right. He doesn't want to be long. The screen is only about 35 deep, and the pin is 30, so he wants to be short of the hole. Well, he kind of hit a fat cut out of there. Yeah, as I said, he was in the water, in the, in the casual water, and he got it on the green, but it wasn't a very good shot. While that was happening, here's Scott Simpson's third shot at eight.
Okay, that's good out of there. Now we're live, and Tom Kite. Rossi, did he go through, or is he in the bunker? What? No, the ball went through the bunker and into the grass. He did get a break, as Dave said. If it had stayed in the downslope of the bunker, he would have had no shot. Now he has a shot that somebody with as great a touch as Tom Kite can play. It's a dangerous shot. It doesn't have much room. Pins about 12 feet from the edge of the green. There's maybe five or six feet of fringe over the bunker. But I think you'll see Tom play a good shot here. He has a reasonable lie. Not a real good one, not a real bad one. Let's go back here, please. Sir, can you just slide around just sure. a little bit more? Thanks, Dr. Folks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Another beautiful touch. That's wonderful. Almost impossible to stop that ball short of the flag, but he did. It's about seven feet. Okay, he's shaking his head, Bob. Tenth fairway. Ozaki. 150-yard shot with a nine iron for Jumbo. Straight downwind and over that bunker at the right front of the green. Easy pitch and well done there. Now we have the two co-leaders facing par putts again. Scott's by far the longest. This is the furthest Curtis has been away from the hole on the first nine holes. And I really wouldn't call this a makeable putt, but you never know. But you don't because he's due. Uh, he's been 28 holes without a birdie. He's mm. very patient, David. Tom Kite for par. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, -ho. Curtis doesn't know it. He's but tied he's back the lead in the tie. With 29 straight holes without a birdie. This is a beautiful par 3 11th hole, and that's Mark McComber. It's about 195, Jack. Wind coming hard from the left. Curtis for par. Yes. Wow. 